Well, guys, here it is, the Swartberg Pass. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you uh, local South Africans have heard of this and been through it. It's just fantastic. This is coming in through the start of it, which comes from the Prince Albert side on the R328. Uh, the scenery is just mind-boggling. As soon as you get into this area, it's just like, wow, what has happened here? Uh, most of the, actually the whole pass is still dirt road, which means it hasn't been tarmacked or anything, uh, which is quite an amazing feat if you think about it. Um, this pass was actually um, designed and originally started to manufacture it, build it, in the 1880s, it was like miles ago, a long time ago. And it was actually because the Swartberg Mountains. And I was always wondering why they call it the Swartberg Mountains. I mean, that doesn't look very black if you drive through it. It's a very reddish kind of rocky earth, right? And it's probably from a distance. Uh, if you're like way out near the coast and you look inland and you see this black line. And this black line is very long. I'd say about 300 kilometers long, running parallel to the coast. And you have to cross this black line of mountains to get to the Karoo. And there are a couple of paths that they built, but this one is specifically was also built because the Mayron's Port Pass, which is just along their road, uh, a few kilometers, relatively speaking, north, uh, was flooded very often because it follows the river, the Mayron's Port Pass. And this one goes over the top and you get up to about 1500 meters, uh, which means if Prince Albert is 600 meters above sea level, you're climbing a kilometer. And on the other side, you drop down back under 100. So you've really, got a lot of ups and downs and some rather hairy little moments because this pass was built by hand can you believe that with picks and shovels and by actually convict labor by Thomas Bain in the end it took about three years to build once he took over and there's no uh, railings there's no safety nets there's just gravel road and there's hard packed um, very clever walls built with rocks which are never been cemented or concreted in. It's just loosely packed, which allows drainage. And if you consider how old this pass is, as we crest the top of the pass, uh, it's quite a feat of engineering. I mean, there's 150 years later and it's still standing. And as we come over the top, that view is just awesome. And on the right hand side, on the side of the car, it just drops off steep. So if you do manage to Lock up your tires, you are going over the edge, man. But what a dramatic view. Awesome place to visit. I'm sure you've done it before. It's about 30 k's long. You're going to need at least an hour to do this little road. Well worth it. Um, when we went there, it was nice and clear. It can be misty, it can be rainy, which means it's quite slippery as well. It also snows a lot, quite a lot up there. And I like the history of it, which was just really cool. Built back then by hand. Uh, they had the horse and donkey carts um, coming through from Oatsworn all the way to Prince Albert to opening up the route. And look at this dramatic view, how high up you are and how open and exposed you feel. And right as we come down the other side, there's a little rainbow greeting us, saying welcome to the uh, coastal side of the mountain range. And that, my friends, is not even Photoshop. That was pretty awesome to see. So yeah, if you're ever in the area, come around this way, take a little drive out. Beautiful area to see, lovely and dramatic. Awesome, loved it. Cheers, thanks for watching.